In boxing, looks can be deceiving. The misconception of those fighters who have more bite than bark, and those who look much less dangerous at the weigh-in than when that first punch hits home. And alongside Ruiz Jr., Golovkin, and many more, very few fit this persona quite like the man who can be considered today's most successful active fighter. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. A relatively small, kind, and humble Filipino fighter whose fight night performances bring much more than meets the eye. Here contrasting the humble and the arrogant, we look at some of Pacquiao's opponents from the past, around the time that he was, arguably, at both his physical and commercial prime, all of which, rightly so, believed that they could beat the eight-weight world champion. I think he has all the tools it takes to beat a guy like Manny Pacquiao. If there's ever a time for Hatton to be able to beat Pacquiao, he'll be in this fight. In the same performances that lead to Manny becoming one of boxing's most respected figures of all time. Please click thumbs up, subscribe, and press the bell button if you're new to the channel as we look at before and after fighting Manny Pacquiao. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. First up, we go back 11 years to a night billed as the dream match. Pacquiao versus De La Hoya. I just have to make sure Pacquiao, when he when he comes in with his uh, explosive style um, and his hard punches, I have to make sure I have my hands up. Even then, Manny was considered the world's number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter. However, many pundits speculated that the size and reach difference was simply too great. My motivation has been his skills. My motivation has been his youth. And whilst there was little, if any, trash talk, I, down. I saw Oscar De La Hoya be completely dismantled. I think this tremendously damages his legacy. I just couldn't pull the trigger. I was gun shy. Were you hurt in that fight? Never. Just emotionally. Has a lot of energy. That was very difficult. We didn't know him to be what he was and what he became uh, after that. Were you shocked in that? I mean, we were shocked. Yes. But were you shocked too? I, I, mean, I was shocked for about two years. <laughs> Next. Six months later, a showdown with Britain's beloved brawler, Ricky Hatton. 18 months after the hitman's loss to Mayweather, he'd agreed to jump straight back in at the deep end. And labeling Pacquiao as one-dimensional, he launched a more verbal approach during the buildup. Same move every time. Right hook, roll under. Right hook, roll under. Right hook, spin off. Just give him someone to spin off onto. There's ever a time for Hatton to be able to beat Pacquiao, he'll be in this fight. One that a devastating loss that ultimately led to Hatton's retirement. That man did win, but I mean, when the punch lands like that so early on and that, you know, a lot of ifs and buts, but that's boxing, one punch, that's all it's in set. Another six months on, and yet another Hall of Fame fighter stepped forward. Miguel Cotto, a Puerto Rican with just one loss to his name at the time. 150% sure I'm going to beat money. I'm the strongest boxer in a pass. I'm pretty smart. In a build-up void of arrogance or brashness. Miguel Cotto comes to, to boxing to play the big name. I'm always available. And Manny is one of the best boxers we have for all time. Early 2010. And this time, it was the turn of Josh Clotty, a Ghanaian fighter who, funnily enough, also returned to the ring earlier this year, now aged 41. I'm happy that he gives me the opportunity because if Manny Pacquiao says he's not going to fight you, sure, it's not going to happen. You see, so the friendship dies when you get to the ring. After the fight, the friendship comes back. I know what, what I'm going to face and I know who I'm going to face. It's not going to be an easy fight for all of us at all. Another matchup which lacked any animosity between two calm, respectful fighters. There's not much better than the moments right before the opening bell of a Manny Pacquiao fight. On the night, however, Pacquiao pulled off a shutout performance, not losing a step. What an 
amazing combination puncher this man is. I respect him, and he's the best pound for pound fighter. Everybody I fought, I don't think I lost. I lost to Manny Pacquiao. He's very, very fast. Contrastingly, at the back end of the year, Pacquiao's second attempt at negotiations with Mayweather had broken down. Cue the arrival of a much less humble and popular opponent, the infamous Antonio Margarito. Es puto Pacquiao. We're gonna have to beat him. Fred Roach is scared right now. Fred Roach is scared that that uh, that, that we're gonna beat Manny Pacquiao. Somewhat of a bittersweet victory for the smaller and more humble man. Might be able to pull off what would be a spectacular stoppage early here. He's really piling it on right here in this fourth round. Manny mauled the Mexican fighter over 12 rounds. And there truly couldn't have been a more fitting occasion for Pacquiao, now the octuple champion, to reach boxing's greatest accolade. We knew Manny was very fast. And we were going good until I got cut, and then that's when the problems started coming. Next, 11 months after Manny's knockout loss to Marquez in late 2012, he returned to face Brandon Rios, also trained under Robert Garcia in California. You know what? To me, I think he's scared, and Freddie Roach is scared. I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to cancel the fight saying that I hurt my hand or something just because he's scared. After the first clash of camps in the Margarito fight, it meant that the beef this time around was more about the trainers than the fighters themselves. Yet in the same clinical fashion, Pacquiao proved too fast and too active, putting a second L on Rios's resume. I like I worked my ass off so hard. Five months in the gym, training, training, training. Like I look at the 24-7, I look at all the, the shit I was saying. I shouldn't be saying that shit. No, I fought it. I fought one of the lesions. Another year on, and another unbeaten fighter. This time, the smart, fast New York native, Chris Algieri. And went straight to the table. After I beat Manny, I'll have a lot more pull, <laughs> a lot more juice to be able to, to, uh, to negotiate. A win, but by knocking Manny Pacquiao out in China, right next to his hometown. I mean, that's uh, it's hard to say what would happen after that, but that would uh, either way, my career is going to be catapulted into into another stratosphere after this fight. So humble and respectful, he entered the fight with nothing but praise for Pacquiao. Pacquiao said, "If he doesn't want to punch, I will create an action. If he does punch, I'll count." Ten by Pacquiao stuns Algeria. Praise that he's continued to preach exponentially throughout the Filipino's ongoing career. He's a savvy veteran with 65 fights, and he, and he knows exactly how his style works. Even to today, six years on, where he expects him to overwhelm Keith Thurman in a couple of weeks' time. Less than three years ago, Jesse Vargas also came in thinking he had the tools to beat a now-aging version of Manny. <laughs> Expecting to overwhelm Pacquiao to avenge the losses of Barrera and Morales, putting himself as top ranks hottest asset. Now it's my time, you know, I planned this as a kid. I said I wanted to take him out and now I get the opportunity to do so and I will. After beating Manny Pacquiao on November 5th, I will be the, their top dog, their top guy. You know, I mean, they're going to push me from then on. Following the pattern, Vargas believed his speed and size would be too much. Though just like the rest, Pacquiao dropped him in the second. To win comfortably across all three scorecards. And new WBO Welterweight Champion of the World. I tried my best. You know, I promised to come back stronger, and I tried looking for the big three. I tried connecting with the big shots. I mean, I threw more punches than Manny, so I was looking for the win. And whilst most believe that yet another unfair decision loss was the end of the road for Manny. It instead sparked the desire for one last rise to the top. And that rise started with arguably the biggest contrast of the loss. I mean, y'all think I'm about to lose the Manny Pacquiao, man? I'm about to beat his motherfucking ass on God now. The habitually loud and outspoken trash talker from Cincinnati, Adrian the Problem Broner. He's like, but he ain't, he ain't, fight, he ain't fighting Floyd. Absolutely, man, that's it. He fight me. But do you think... I'm to beat your mother... Ass, man, you worry about Floyd. You he already beat you, brother. You Despite being unable to put him away, Pacquiao stalked the American right to the final bell. Lighting him up with his head speed, and now Pacquiao loading up Broder in the corner. 
Though, just like Horn, Broner believed he had won by making Manny miss and hitting him clean. I beat him. Everybody out there know I beat him. Everybody out there know I beat him. It seemed as though you couldn't get it close like, enough. It already sounded like it was against me. So I already ain't, I already, I already ain't got a fair shake talking to you. The noise from the crowd, however, spoke volumes as onlookers saw a very different fight. I thank the whole hood who came out here. I love y'all. I did this for the hood. Y'all know I beat that boy. Whilst the majority now stand in awe of Pacquiao's ability to fight so competitively into his later years, none are more understanding of just how capable the Filipino is than those who witnessed his scintillating best. And at a time when every fight is make or break, Manny now prepares for another brash, confident American. Keith, one time Thurman, does not just beat Manny Pacquiao, does knock out Manny Pacquiao. Hoping to put another incredible tally on a truly remarkable career. Greek mythology. Stories from the dawn of Western civilization. Powerful gods, valiant heroes, and enough violence, murder, and incest to make the Game of Thrones look like a church picnic. Zeus versus Hera, Hercules versus Hades, Narcissus versus himself. Epic conflict, epic sagas, in stories not even remotely a Motivedia presentation.